Prime Minister is hiking taxes on home builders, on doctors, on job creators, and on farmers. And he's also raising taxes on hospitals and schools. The New Brunswick Premier is taking this Prime Minister to court because of the unconstitutional quadrupling carbon tax and the costs it will impose on snow plows, ambulances, heating hospitals and schools, meaning the loss of countless police officers, nurses, doctors and teachers. Instead of defeating the carbon tax in court, why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? Good question. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for the past number of years, multiple Conservative Premiers have gone after the price on pollution in courts, and they lost at the Supreme Court. The Canadians have decided that uh, price on pollution is the right thing. Uh, we've won multiple elections on that because Canadians know that the only way to build a strong economy is to fight climate change at the same time. That's not true. It's not true. It's just not true. The leader of the opposition doesn't get that, doesn't accept that, doesn't understand that abandoning the fight against climate change would hurt Canadians. That's not true. Would hurt our institutions. Nope. Would hurt people and economic growth right across the country. Pure fiction. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, and he concealed from both the courts and from Canadians his plan to quadruple the carbon tax right, to 61 right. cents a litre. Now, Premier Scott Moe of Saskatchewan says that this will hit schools with $204 million in carbon taxes and hospitals with $175 million in carbon taxes, meaning we will lose doctors, teachers, and other necessary workers serving Canadians. Instead of forcing premiers to fight to axe the tax in court. Why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? Good question. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is proposing that we abandon all the fight against climate change. He wants to take away the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadians. The middle class and people working hard to join it, even as we both fight climate change, reduce emissions in this country, and create growth and opportunities in uh, cleaner jobs and cleaner careers. These are the issues uh, that Canadians are preoccupied with. How are they going to be able to afford jobs into the future when this leader wants to take away the fight against climate change? What the hell are you talking about? Have the Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, we have heard some shocking and. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Condone those remarks, or will he call his minister? It's a bowl of Chowdell, sir. Chowdell. Chowdell. New Democrats believe in lower rents, not higher. When the Conservatives were in power, they let big, greedy corporations buy up affordable homes and convert them into luxury cash cows. They allowed that to happen over 800,000 times. I will ban it. But the Prime Minister allowed it to happen over 370,000 times. Every single time that happens, that means a family gets evicted. That means rents go up. Why? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, over the past number of years, we have worked hand in hand with municipalities and provinces, nonprofit organizations, not only to build more affordable homes, but to ensure that homes that were built as affordable apartments or homes get to stay affordable long into the future. Get to stay affordable long into the future. Get to stay affordable long into the future. Long into the future. Long into the future. Long into the future. We've done that uh, with uh, with funds put forward to purchase by nonprofit organizations uh, a deeper affordable homes. Uh, also to move forward on public lands that will be converted to affordable homes and kept affordable for decades and even a century to come. These are the kinds of things that we're going to continue to do and focus on in this house. Okay. What the f*** are you talking about? 
The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Conservative leaders, chief advisors, also the chief lobbyist for corporate landlords. But what's the Prime Minister's excuse? For decades, Liberals and Conservatives have failed to allow Indigenous, to ensure Indigenous communities have safe and affordable places to call home. Now, over 300,000 Indigenous people live in unsuitable housing. For the Prime Minister, it's delay, delay, delay. When will the Prime Minister realize that he is failing Indigenous people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have tripled investments in Indigenous and Indigenous and Indigenous communities since 2015, including $32 billion in investments expected in 2024-25 alone. We're moving forward on investing uh, in and with Indigenous communities to build more homes, to create more economic opportunities, economic opportunities, economic opportunities, to create the kinds of partnerships uh, that I got to see. Uh, just a couple of days ago in Inuvik, uh, where the Inuvialuit are moving forward on ambitious plans for the future. This is reconciliation and action. Not just pretty words, but actions that are actually delivering for Canadians. There's lots more to do, but we're going to keep delivering for Indigenous. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost of food. The food professor estimates that between 2022 and 2025, the cost of food will be up 34 percent. That's a time that coincides exactly with the NDP Liberal Coalition. Coincidentally, the NDP leader's chief spokesman and brother, his company is a lobbyist for Metro. You're right. But the food professor blames the increase on carbon taxes. Carbon taxes on farmers and truckers who bring us our food. Before Canadians go hungry, why won't the Prime Minister allow a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, farmers across this country are feeling the impacts of the extreme weather events that come from climate change, whether it's droughts or wildfires or floods. Uh, we are seeing the costs of climate change every single day. And we put forward a price on pollution that not only brings down emissions and creates more solutions uh, and economic growth. It also puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians right across the country. It's the parliamentary bu budget officer who says that. Why the f are you lying? Why are you always lying? We're going to continue to fight climate change while the leader opposite wants to abandon the fight against climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister loves to blame the rest of the world for the rampant food price inflation here at home. But the food professor proves that narrative false. He has calculated that food prices have risen 36% faster in Canada than in the United States of America. What does Canada have that the Americans don't have? Two words, carbon tax. So instead of forcing Canadians to line up at food banks, why won't he let them line up to vote in a carbon tax election? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I, I didn't dare say anything after the last question because I sort of couldn't believe my ears, but here we have the Leader of the Opposition actually quoting some sort of expert, which is a brand new thing for this House of Commons. <laughs> Rely on facts and data is an excellent thing to hear. Now, perhaps the Leader of the Opposition will listen to the hundreds of economists and scientists who have pointed out that putting a price on pollution, particularly one that puts more money back in the pockets of the middle class and those working hard to join it, you are fake news, is the best way to both fight climate change and grow the economy. But the Leader Opposite, he just wants to play Policy, policy, policy that is helping 400,000 kids uh, get better food across the country. He stood against childcare. He has stood against affordability. It's affordability. It's affordability. It's affordability. Measure. 